Chapter 16 The Earthwork Bridge After seeing the fight of the two roosters, Jiro definitely refused to accompany Shunzo to school and back. His mother blamed him for that, but he ignored her. When it was time to go to school, he left by himself. On his way back, he always wasted time, but there was one thing different from before. He was sure to be back by supper time. He took every care not to be found in his mischief by his mother or grandmother. In the company of his father, he talked and laughed a lot. Otherwise, he seldom opened his mouth at home. He rarely talked to his brothers, too, and behaved as if he were confident in everything. Grandmother was irritated by his attitude. Otami thought of Jiro's behavior a little more deeply. The more she wondered, however, the more confused she was in treating him. Sometimes she asked her husband for help, but his answer was the same each time. Leave him as he is, he said. It's no good for you to doubt him. But actually, he also couldn't read Jiro's mind very well. The brave young rooster he had seen at the Masaki's was always flickering in his mind. It would be a shame to get another blow on the head from his father for picking a fight with his brothers. There is time for everything, he thought, and made up his mind to fight against them with no holes barred someday. However severely he might be scolded by his mother and grandmother, he would do it to his heart's content. He had been well prepared for a decisive battle, but the chance would not offer itself. On the contrary, everybody in his family was very attentive to him, handling him with kid gloves. His brothers seldom approached him on the suggestion of their mother and grandmother. They were all watching him from a distance. He felt tired and displeased without anything to do. If something, if things go like this, let them go, he said to himself and became as sullen as ever. Months passed by and it was the season for the Japanese plum to take on its color. One day, as usual, Jiro was playing soldiers with his friends in the graveyard. When a boy rushed in, shouting to him, Kyo chan is being bullied. Leave him alone, he said coldly. I don't mind it at all. Jiro knew that his elder brother was bullied at times, but never felt sympathetic for him, though it was not a breath of fresh air at all. But it's on the bridge. Very dangerous, Jiro chan, he said. Kyo chan cries easily, said Jiro. It can't be so bad. He placed the stick in his hands on a tombstone as if aiming a gun. He did not listen. He did not to listen to his friend anymore. Why not go and see it? said one of the boys. It'll be fun. Some of them were ready to start. Who's bullying him? Jiro asked calmly. As he continued his game of shooting. There are two, Jiro chan. Two? he said, turning back. Yes, two, he said. I feel sorry for him. Let's go, said Jiro and ran at the head of the boys. There was an earthwork bridge across a moat halfway between the school and the outskirt of the village. Two boys were standing on the bridge with Kyoichi between them. Jiro and his friends stopped to watch the scene about ten meters at this side of the bridge. Kyoichi was weeping. The two bullies turned to them but soon turned back in relief because they were younger. Silly boy, you like only girls. Cry baby, 
said one of them to Kyoichi and poked at his forehead with his finger. The other boy grabbed his shoulders from behind to swing him to and fro. Jiro did not think it a very bad bullying and turned in the other direction when he saw a girl standing about 50 meters away. She was Machiko, the girl of the house diagonal, diagonally oppos, oppos, opposite to his house, a rich family called Maekawas. Machiko and Kyoichi had been good friends since they entered school. They were in the same class and often went to school and back together. Though they were a little anxious about being seen by other children. She was friendly with Kyoichi alone, so Jiro rarely had an opportunity to talk with, talk with her, but he was fond of her at heart. Once in a while, when he was looked at with her charming black eyes, he flushed and dropped his eyes in shame. Jiro could easily guess. Why Kyoichi was being bullied by them. He was very eager to watch how his brother was put to shame in public, but at the same time, the two bullies disgusted him, and how lonely Machiko looked. He felt obliged to do something for her. That young rooster came up again in his mind. Jiro dashed to the boy in front of Kyoichi, pushed him away, and said, Let's go home, Kyo chan. The boy pushed back by him, turned to Jiro, and gave him a sharp slap on the cheek. Jiro staggered a little, but the next moment he grasped at his waist. It looked as if a novice were wrestling against the grand champion. Throw him into the water, cried the other boy. But Jiro would not let go his hands with which he was grasping the bully's belt. The other boy joined to force him down. He was pushed down on his back on the dry ground of the bridge, and his head was sticking out of the bridge. Two meters down the water was half covered with green water lilies. At such a critical moment, He did not forget to seize at the boy's sleeves very fast. The two boys did not know what to do with him first, but soon began to tear off his fingers one by one. Just then, Jiro kicked the earth quite hard with the soles of his feet, making his upper half stick out of the bridge. He lost his balance, of course, and fell headlong into the water. So did the two bullies. Splash! All of them broke through the water lilies and budding water chestnuts. Kyoichi, Machiko, and the other boys were looking down uneasily, but very soon Jiro got to the shore first. The skirt of his clothes stuck to his legs, dripping. He wiped away the water plants on his face. As he watched the two boys on guard, they stared at Jiro but dared not strike the first blow. I remember this, said one boy as he climbed up the bank. The other boy followed him in silence. Jiro watched them go off, removing his wet clothes to wring it out. Let's help Jiro chan, said one of the boys. Then all his friends trooped down to the bank while Kyoichi and Machiko kept standing on the bridge. Trying his clothes with his, tying his clothes with his belt, Jiro put it on his shoulder and started for home in the loincloth at the head of the group, singing a military song proudly. He was in a very happy mood. To find Machiko walking with them. The desire to fight against Kyoichi was not felt anymore. He was no longer his rival. That evening, Machiko's mother visited them and stayed till late. Machiko came too. 
The topic centered round the day's battle. He had his head stroked by her mother again and again. She praised him for his bravery very much, making him almost beside himself. You're little but have steady nerves like your father, said old Oito. The word little was quite unnecessary, he thought, but was not very offensive to this time. Isn't he reckless? said Otami, but her tones was quite different from when he had bitten at Kitaro's knee. What discouraged him was that his father was not present and that Machiko was still talking with Kyoichi alone.